We came here asking the Lord for blessing and surely he has added to us to a key to your keychain. What do you need? Maybe a door of a job, maybe a cure for an infirmity. Doors are going to be open. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I invite the brethren to stand up in reverence to the name to the word of the Lord, which is in Acts. Acts chapter ten. Chapter 10. Uh, chapter 10 from verse 1. There was a, a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian re Regiment, a devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms, alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in an end and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? So he said to him, Your prayers and your alms have come up for memory before God. Now send, send men to Job, Jopa and send for Simon, whose sure name is Peter. So let's read also the same chapter, verse 24. And the following day they entered Caesarea. Now Cornelius was waiting for them, and I called together his relatives and close friends and also read verse 44. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all those who heard the word. Amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, the book of Acts is, it brings a description, a, a history of the primitive church the primitive church after Jesus won, was taken to heaven. So the primitive church, it began in prayer. The brethren will see the first verse in the chapter of Acts. You see that the, the ch primitive church begins in prayer. They pray every day. So the, the church began praying because it was one of the greatest teachings that the Lord had left to his disciples. It was prayer. Imagine that Jesus, being the Son of God, with knowledge of all things, but what did he do when he was going to do something that was extraordinary in Israel? He would take his disciples and bring them to the mount. Hey, let's let's pray. We're going to pray. Why? Because the key to our victory is on prayer. It is on prayer. And prayer that has the prophetic content because sometimes many they feel weak in the faith and they may say the Lord may not be hearing me yes the Lord is hearing you 
But our, my prayer, your prayer, our prayer, has a prophetic content. That's what we need to understand. That our our prayer has to have a prophetic prophetic content. It is the prayer of the Lord Jesus Himself when He was about to be given and to the evildoers. He prayed, Lord, Father, keep this cup for me, but uh, may your will be done above all things. But So the, the prayer has to have a prophetic content. So when you can never be discouraged in our prayers, even if it may take a while for us to see the result. But we pray, we know that when the answer comes, that's the right time, because God knows a prophetic time for their prayer to be answered and be fulfilled in our lives. So God knows the moment, the prophetic time of our prayer. And this man here, in Acts, he was a man from the Italian entourage. He was a centurion, he was from the Italian army. He had a hundred soldiers under his command. He was a centurion, but this man, he lived in Caesarea. And I mean, there was a, char a charitable man. He helped everyone in the city. He would give alms. And he also prayed the Lord to the Lord. So he had all the characteristics of a good man, a good citizen. Right? He was a good man. He gave alms. But we know that that salvation is by grace. Right? By grace you are saved through faith. Faith. It doesn't come from you. It doesn't come from uh, through our works. He knew. All of a sudden, he realized that uh, about praying, being good, giving alms. Maybe his parents were people that had this habit. And he acted in the same way. But there was something that was lacking in him. Something. And as he was praying, as the word described, in verse 10, it was present and, and his the anger appeared to him. And he directed to him and said, Cornelius, and Cornelius, and as the man looked to him, to the angel, he said, What is it, Lord? And the angel, Answer to him, Cornelius, your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. Because our actions, my brethren, they are in the presence of God, whatever we do. They are, God is aware of it. Whether we do it for good or for evil, God is aware of them. So the angel said, Cornelius, your prayers and your alms 
have come up for a memorial before God. However, however, the Lord, He wants to show something that is greater. What your life, what you have, it's, it's, uh, your religious life may be good in God's presence. God does not reproach the religious person. However, the angels told him, Hey, look, you will go to you will send someone all the way to the seat of Job. And there, there is a man called Simon, whose last name, uh, whose, no, whose last name is Peter. And those men went there in that city, searching for Peter. So we're going to get there. We're going to go to the first. Um, uh, region with uh, stores. We're going to go there and ask. Like happens in small towns, you speak with the guy that the, the businessman there who is going to answer. Where is someone called Peter? And you answer where Peter is. So then they went there, and Peter, look how the Holy Spirit was already working. So Peter there in Job. He was also praying to the Lord. He was, Peter was, in, at, on top of his house, praying to the Lord, the terrace. And Peter had a vision that he saw that there was sheets that came from heaven with impure animals. And a voice told Peter, pick up those animals and feed off of them. And Peter was, was struggling within himself. Why? Because he, as a good Jew, he would not eat off of impure animals. But the Lord is already preparing Peter to receive to receive Cornelius because Cornelius was a Gentile. So at the beginning the primitive church had this this struggle, this problem of accepting the Gentiles because they believed that Jesus had come only for them. So the Lord prepared Peter and his spirit to receive Cornelius. Although he was a Gentile, he was not a Jew. So then it happened exactly that when the men local uh, found Peter, Peter explained to them, Look, I was praying to the Lord, and the Lord has given me this vision. This vision. And now I understand why the Lord has given me this vision. Because the Lord wants to save Cornelius. My brethren, I, I say once again that salvation is not through works, not because this person is good, because this person gives alms, maybe because this person sometimes goes to the church every weekend. And they go to uh, the church once a year. But that's not good enough to save men. A man needs an experience with the Holy Spirit of the Lord. 
because who reveals Jesus to man is the Holy Spirit. So that's why the word says, Peter, when he began to speak those things, the Holy Spirit fell upon them. Because Jesus is only revealed when there is the action of the Holy Spirit upon man's life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And there is another passage that we highlighted in this episode here, which is that on the following day, when they came to Caesarea, Cornelius was already waiting and had already invited uh, relatives and friends for that service. So, the mission of the church. So it was uh, he was a new Christian. He had never, uh, not even entered into a church, but he was already inviting people. He already wanted everybody to participate in the blessing that he had received. He invited his relatives, and and we are in the month of the families of the family. It is an opportunity that we have to invite. If they are going to accept, this is between them and God. But our mission is to make the invitation so that salvation may be extended to our family members and relatives. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My brethren, with this word, the Lord wants to awake us for these last times. Here it was the first moments of the church. Now we are living on the last moments of the church. Right? If there they embraced the things of the Lord and they feared and they invited and they had services on the public places and their courageous servants. The church of this last time has to be a church that is courageous. A fearless church. A church that is evangelizes. Oh, but I invite this person three times. He doesn't come. Nothing wrong with that. We need to do our part. And the Lord will do His own. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May God bless us. Let's sing another song. What number? 2302.
I invite the church to stand up. And quickly, I'm going to uh, share an experience. An experience that was uh, unforgettable. When I was in Brazil, we were allowed to do a serenade at night. Nowadays, I don't think we allow because of the violence. But in the past, not because I'm old, but I'm still young. But we used to go out at night to do a serenade at night in front of the house. But a group from another church, they also went out to do a serenade. And before they left the church, they prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said the following. Go to this street and this number and sing a song because I want to operate on that uh, house. And this group went, looked for the address to the street and the number of the house. And once past midnight, we used to do the serenade uh, all the way up to 1 a.m. It was wonderful. And we began, they began to sing. And that woman, th there was a woman inside of the house, and she opened up the window, sobbing, because she was crying so much. And she said the following, You came at the right time, because I'm here, desperate. Because my husband, he works, on the valley. Valley is a big co company. He has a schedule. He was working at that night. And my little son is burning of fever and I don't know what to do. And I don't know what else I can do. I already called uh, someone else and I have done anything. I'm finding a doctor at that time Back then, um, if, if today is difficult, can you imagine Brazil, especially at that time in Brazil, the suffering of this woman was great. And the group said, no, don't worry, because God already knew that. Because God sent us to, be, to come here to sing for you. And the group entered, entered there. And the brethren prayed with faith, and the fever of that child went away. And that woman received a blessing, and she went to the church. I don't know about today if she continues in the church, but she received that wonderful blessing. And she said, I want to be a part of this church. I want to be a part of these people, my brethren. The Lord wants to use us. We know that the world is different. We no longer have this kind of freedom to open up the church uh, early in the morning. But the Lord wants to use us in a different way, and G God will use us. Let's pray. Lord, we adore you and praise you. Praise your name. Because you, you remain the same. You are the God of yesterday, today, and forever. Blessed be, the, be your name, Lord. Because you have operated on behalf of your people. Blessed be your name, Lord. Remain with us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. And I say the peace of the Lord to everyone.